Hello there. In this video, we're going to take you through some of the changes associated to the latest version of DocShell, DocShell 3.0. So, to get a version, to get a hold of the version, uh, the extensions, the PhysX extensions, and also to get a hold of the provider project, uh, go to www.softlandingcanada.com and go to the downloads area. And if you scroll down, you'll note that we have a uh, DocShell BS 2013 VizX link here and a DocShell provider for Telerac Viz 2013. Note that uh, we currently only support C Sharp. Um, we will have a uh, VB.NET uh, provider um, in uh, due course. So uh, to get a hold of this one, you will have to create an account. If you don't already have an account, um, you have to be logged in to be able to download the source code. So this is the source code uh, for the provider project, and these are the extension uh, associated to those providers. And so uh, once you expand the, uh, the uh, VizX uh, extensions compress file, you will see that there are now three um, VizXs uh, associated to DocShell. And you can, if you have a 2012 version of DocShell, um, th they can run side by side because this will only run in Visual Studio 2013 and the other extension will only run in Visual Studio uh, 2012. So um, happily uh, run these three ex um, extensions uh, to install them. And uh, once installed, then start up Visual Studio. So here we have Visual Studio. So we're gonna create a new project so new project and I'm going to create a desktop application. I'll call this one uh, demo one. Okay, as you can see, I've created my uh, desktop application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a data source. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is just remove that. Uh, And I'm going to add a data source uh, from a database. Pause the video, I'll be right back. All right, so I've added the data source for uh, book club data and my data in here. And now what I'll do is I'll add one screen. And uh, to do that, we just go here, add screen, create a list detail screen and call it books. And just add some related data. And with that in play, we'll just run to see what the default application looks like. And here you go, this is the uh, default application uh, out of the box. All right, so now we're going to um, close these screens down. What we'll do now is we'll add the DocShell extension. So uh, to do that, you click on the properties for the top solution project. Go to extensions, and you should see DocShell uh, uh, 3.0 uh, here. So once you've clicked it and it's finished uh, loading, you've got the shell extension, so we can just save that. The next thing you want to do is uh, um, take your provider project, which you should have uh, uh, recompiled. If you need information on how to do that, uh, please see the startup uh, videos that are on the website um, for um, C Sharp which will show you how to uh, create the provider projects. Um, so I actually have my provider projects already compiled, so what I'm going to do is just add a reference to them. And I have my provider project here, and I also have included all of my uh, Telerec uh, controls libraries. So we'll do that and save that. So those references are now saved. We can give the client a quick build. All right, and the next thing you want to do is in your client folder, let's create a new folder. We'll just call that one DS for DocShell. And in that folder, we're going to add uh, a app, add app shell layout model. So this is uh, kind of new. Before you had to add new item. Now you can just click here. And the big difference between DocShell um, 3.0 and the previous versions is that We've now separated the models um, into an application shell model versus a um, individual screen model. So we'll go through the screen models in a second, but basically um, 
when we refresh this uh, particular model, you'll see that uh, we no longer have the screen definitions. Uh, we just have the navigation groups, um, which correlate to ribbon tabs. Um, and uh, we go and view the uh, toolbox. We uh, will notice that it doesn't have all of the uh, toolbox items anymore because some of them are in the uh, screen model itself. So basically the same process as before. Um, what we do is uh, go and pick the export. Now if you don't see this particular uh, export, that means that your provider isn't referenced properly. Um, and further to that, you would probably wouldn't see these uh, uh, icons here. All right, so now we're going to just reference our navigation container controls to our ribbon area. And let's do the same thing for our docking controls. And they go to, there we go. Now at this point here, the only thing that's left to do is add a license key. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and you can get a license key from the website. So if you go um, to the website and click uh, here to get a free evaluation key, uh, and then just basically copy this entire key here and paste it into the area within the application uh, where it says li license key. All right, I've uh, pasted that key in now, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so we've got one screen, and the screen is book list detail, and we've set it up, and away we go. So at this point here, we actually haven't modeled the actual uh, screen itself. So what will come up is um, basically a screen um, sorry, a navigation command within the navigation uh, group. And when you press the button, it will still open the screen, but it won't have an icon yet. Oh, and I forgot one step. So basically, this is still running the old shell. So let's just close that down and change it to, uh, to run our shell. And so to do that, you need to go uh, this time to the client properties. Uh, once it's stopped and select properties open and change the shell here to uh, soft landing dock shell and now run it there you go so uh, notice that uh, books list detail is here it doesn't have an icon so uh, there's two ways that we can add an icon uh, I'm going to take you through both. So first of all, let's do it through a screen uh, model. So to do that, first we'll just show you that the screen does open. There you go. And it's a docking framework, so you can move and dock your screens around. And uh, when you close and reopen that screen, it'll uh, surface in the same location. So that's good. So let's get out of here. And let's see how to uh, model a screen. So of course, you don't have to model a screen. Um, I'm going to show you a way to add the icon, the navigation icon, without actually doing this through code. Uh, but to add a model for a screen, you simply go to the screen itself, right click, and select Add Screen Layout Model. So in the previous version of Doc Shell, um, previous versions of Doc Shell, the model uh, was basically uh, application navigation and layout and all of the screens. And in this version, we have um, basically separated that. So it falls in, it's more consistent with how Microsoft has broken out the LSML definitions per file. So what you'll notice here is that you've got your LSML file. And then if I just zoom in out a little bit, you can see that we have, uh, maybe better if I just pin that back, we have the, uh, the actual definition for the light switch screen itself. So these are the commands that are currently in the LSML file. And then this is the actual screen definition, the view container. And again, for more information on how to model um, and change these particular elements, I suggest there's um, plenty of videos on the website that uh, highlight how to do that. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the objective in this is to actually uh, set the uh, navigation command, which is this particular command right here. And what we want to do is we just want to change this to um, a different name. So I'm going to go and pick a new icon. In this case, I picked the orders PNG. And when you do that, it automatically will, uh, um, when you save, it should create a resources folder. And inside that resources folder, it's put the uh, particular um, icon, in this case, uh, image PNG. And the other thing that you need to do um, is to change the, 
let's see here, we want to change it from local, from using the light switch to using a local icon. And I think that should do it. We just want to give it some text. Uh, so let's just call this one books for now. And hit run. And there you go. So now we have uh, the icon and books. And so we can tailor that, um, change the type of icon, and so on and so forth to our liking. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, there, you know, there is this uh, ability to add a per screen, per, um, per model per screen approach, just like we've done here. Um, I do want to point out a few things before we show you the code version of how to do the same thing. Um, you'll notice here that the application model is called uh, DT app, and DT stands for desktop um, and DT screen. So those are the two uh, model extensions. And then you have your diagram file, and underneath that you'll actually see your TT file, and underneath that you'll see your code generated um, output. So this is the actual C# -sharp file that gets uh, generated and compiled into your application, um, and it's uh, inferred a lot of this information from the fact that you had this provider project referenced uh, uh, on your uh, application itself. Same thing here is uh, if you go down and if you want to see what's uh, being generated here, you look in here, you'll see um, all of the uh, code generated um, output for the screen uh, for that particular screen. So as I mentioned, there's a there's another way that we can actually um, add icons. So instead of actually creating a um, model, uh, what we can do is we can simply just delete the model. So we can just go and hit delete. And uh, if we were to run this again, you will see that uh, the particular icon is gone. All right, so we're kind of back to where we were. Um, text is back to what it was and the icons missing again. So let's uh, let's do this now by code and add it in by code. All right, so to do that, what we need to do is uh, what I like to do is create another folder. And we're just going to call this one command override. And in here we're going to create a class. So add new item class. And we'll just call this one a uh, command override service. All right, great. Now, uh, what you need to do is you need to inherit from I doc shell. Just give that a second here. Good old resharper. Uh, provide some uh, insight into what we want here. And I guess i got to remember which one it is. It's the... Uh, command. So we're going down to... Navigation as a service somewhere around here. Pause the video and I'll find it and I'll come right back. All right. After a little bit of searching, I found it. It's this provider command manager service. Just implement that. So we'll again implement interface. There's really two methods in here. Uh, one which we're not going to play with, uh, which is the finalize, so we'll just minimize that. And then this override screen message uh, interface. So basically there's some parameters that come in. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I'll just pin that back. Just a bit more space to do some coding here. All right, and uh, so as uh, this method would uh, sort of uh, indicate, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to override uh, the screen command and kind of fill in the blanks. So in this case here, what we're going to do is first we're going to check um, if the uh, target container type is equal to target container type dot. And we want to make sure that it's a navigation container, which is uh, the area that we're trying to uh, change. And then the second thing we want to do is do we're going to do a switch statement on the um, screen name. And then what we'll do in here is we'll just uh, put in, and now i got to get the name of the screen that we're going to, okay, it's book, book list detail. So the easiest thing to do is just copy that, get rid of the extension. All right, so if the screen name is that, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to go after the uh, command 
uh, view model and in particular the doc shell command and in particular there the image uh, path and basically um, it defaults to the resource uh, folder so if we go to our solution explorer we can see that we have uh, orders uh, in there png and if it uh, if you've got subfolders in there then it's like a forward slash uh, and then the various uh, file names all right so that's good and the other thing we want to do is uh, we want to put the uh, view model dot uh, display name equal to uh, the books for example all right and so let me do that we do that and we're all good and let's just do a break and I think that should be good enough there for code. Now, so what we're going to do here is uh, um, what what DocShell does in, in at startup is it looks for um, um, a an instance of a class that actually implements the i DocShell provider commands manager service. So if you don't actually add one, it doesn't really care. But in this case, we do want it to care because what we want it to do is for every um, shell command that it creates we want it to call through this method. So to do that, um, you simply add in the attribute export and select that and then open parenthesis and then you just type type of and then in this case here it's the interface. And there you go. So basically um, this is allowing math to uh, come to the realization that there is this command override service uh, class out there um, and as long as it supports this interface it's going to instantiate that at startup and so every time it builds a uh, command for the navigation menu it's going to uh, call through this method pass in the, the various parameters and this allows us to kind of override um, in this case here so uh, again we don't have a model so what I'll do is just screen model so what I'll do is I'll just put a breakpoint on uh, well, let's put it here so we know that we're getting into this method all right and hit run see what happens boom so here we go, we hit the uh, breakpoint and uh, it's a navigation container. And you can see here the screen is books list detail and you actually get the uh, light switch eye, eye navigation screen uh, passed in as well in case you want to do some fancy stuff there. Um, and then you've got your command uh, view model. Um, so this is the view model that's backing view model that's being built for the doc shell command. And as you can see here, um, the display name is books list detail. We're going to override that and change that to the books. And the image path right now is null because we actually don't have a navigation command within uh, light switch. So if we just do this, you can see that it hits that. And I'll just take that breakpoint off and hit run. So there you go. So basically, we've added a uh, navigation command and icon through code. And it runs uh, precisely the way it did before. All right, so uh, that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, for more information, please go to our website at uh, www.softlanding.com and uh, feel free to uh, um, download the applications, the uh, license key, use the trial license key. Please note that the uh, trial license key is only good for um, a single, sorry, for a um, up to two screens and two navigation groups. Um, so basically that would be two navigation groups each containing two screens or a total of four screens. I uh, hope you like this uh, new change that we have and uh, we're always uh, interested in your suggestions. So um, please feel free to reach out to us uh, through our website and uh, um, let us know what you think of the, the latest version. Uh, thank you very much and have a nice day.